Simpsonville is the latest with plans to jump in and expand it into their city. I'm Kirsten Glavin. Coming up, we'll show you where you can expect to see it. Before you hit the trail, Storm Team 7's Malachi Rogers has our forecast first. All right, thank you, Gordon. It's been a hot day once again across the upstate and the mountains, whether you're in the upstate or the mountains. Closing in on 90 degrees right now in the mountains, mid-90s once again today in the upstate. We'll be waiting for those updated numbers, and temperatures are expected to stay quite steamy through the evening under mostly clear skies. In fact, over the next seven hours, temperatures will stay in the low 80s through 10 o'clock tonight in the upstate. Those temperatures will stay in the mid 70s through 10 in the mountains. But there is some relief in sight in our seven day forecast, and we'll cover that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Malachi. Police say they found a BB gun in an upstate school, and now two students are facing charges. This happened at Berea High School about 1130 this afternoon. Our Ben Hoover standing by live outside the school to walk us through some very scary moments today, Ben. Well, Gordon, like many schools across the upstate, a lot of excitement here at Berea High School as they wind down the school year. But today, this morning, emotion started to run high very soon after a student went to the front office with a tip that she saw another student with a gun in his backpack. And that's when it, investigators say that they dispatched a school resource officer to go find that student in the classroom. But that student had wandered out of the classroom and was nowhere to be found. Administrators announced the school was in full lockdown, instructing students and staff to stay put and out of sight of doors and windows. Deputies then set up a perimeter and searched the school. Within an hour, officers found a 16-year-old boy in another classroom, where they also found a backpack belonging to a 15-year-old boy with what turned out to be a BB gun. Whenever they located, when the deputies located that backpack and the gun, the gun had been transferred to another student's backpack. Both the initial student and that second student whose backpack was in possession of the gun are detained and are facing charges at this time. I'm literally shaking right now because I, I can picture myself like that. I've seen that everywhere all across the country, but I wouldn't think my school would go through that. I mean, it was terrifying at first. It was a little terrifying, but then, but then I was like, you know what, this, this will all go over. We've learned that both students have been charged with possession of a weapon on school property. Investigators say they have since learned that the boy who brought the BB gun to school had recently had an argument with another student and no direct threat was made today. Beth Brotherton with the school district says that both students have been suspended and they could be expelled. For now, we're reporting live here in Greenville County, Ben Hoover, 7 News. Worth pointing out again, Ben, that it does sound like at least one student did exactly what the school would want them to do in this case by, by reporting what she saw. Beth Brotherton with the school district talked a little bit about that earlier today. Gordon saying it's what they teach the students. If you see something, say something. All right, that's our Ben Hoover live for us tonight. Ben, thanks. In Western North Carolina, deputies are investigating a shooting in Forest City. Rutherford County deputies say they were called to a domestic situation on Doggett Grove Road. This was just before 6.45 this morning. Now, as they were headed to the scene, they say one man was shot and flown to Spartanburg Medical Center. We have no word on that person's condition tonight. Greenville County deputies are investigating a shooting as well. This happened just before 9 last night in front of a home on Ledford Drive, south of Interstate 85. Deputies say a man pulled up in a car, got out, and shot the victim who was standing outside. They say the victim is stable, but there's no word on any arrests. Last night, two tractor trailers collided on I-26. One of them, a tanker filled with gasoline that spilled nearly 2,000 gallons of gas. Troopers closed the highway in both directions. North Carolina Highway Patrol investigators say one person was killed, another had to go to the hospital. 7 News reporter Stephanie Borman is live near mile marker 70. That's right at the South Carolina, North Carolina border where this crash happened. Steph? So, as you can see from the traffic behind me, the highway is reopened tonight. It was closed from about 8 30 when that crash happened last night and reopened around 8 a.m. today. Today, we also learned the cause of that crash and why emergency management officials say none of that gasoline actually got into the water, water, waterways here. We honestly hold people's lives in our hands. Jonathan Kirshner has been driving 18 wheelers for six years. He says in his experience, I-26 is one of the most dangerous roads to navigate. It gets 
windy and or windy I should say and uh, curvy a lot of people don't understand you know we can't slow down very easily and we're going downhill it makes it even harder on Tuesday night while driving through North Carolina he got stuck in this crash near mile marker 70 and it literally looked like just a bunch of cars just parked all willy-nilly just all over the interstate State Highway Patrol officers, along with 22 area agencies, responded to the deadly crash involving two tractor trailers around 8.30 p.m. Tuesday. Investigators say Aaron Eric Smith was traveling west on I-26 and failed to slow down, crashing into the back of a tractor trailer driven by Frederick Lamont Kubertson. Kubertson was taken to the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Investigators say Smith died in the crash. The highway was shut down for nearly 12 hours because nearly 2,000 gallons of gasoline spilled from a tanker. We did have to pump two sections of the tanker out that did not rupture. Luckily, only the first section ruptured, which holds about 2,000, 2,500 gallons. Emergency Management Director Bobby Arledge says the gasoline made its way into the storm drain next to the highway. Arledge says, fortunately, the drainage pipe did not lead to any bodies of water. We're thankful we don't think anything got in the water. NCDOT officials tell 7 News 500 feet of the highway near the spill will be replaced within the next week. Gas just really eat the, eat the asphalt up. So check this out. This is the damage that we're talking about. DOT officials say when they do come out to repair that section of the highway, they're going to have to keep one lane of the highway shut down. In the meantime, they are encouraging drivers to use caution if you are driving in this area. Reporting live, Stephanie Borman, 7 News. Yeah, we'll have to be ready for some construction delays, Stephanie. So there was some delay in response that was discussed. Tell us more about that. So Arledge told me earlier that when that crash actually happened, a lot of people here on the highway came onto the emergency lane, which is a big no-no in this situation because emergency officials have to actually use the emergency lane. So there was somewhat of a delay, but not too much of a big deal. However, if you do find yourself in a situation like that, please stay off the emergency lanes. Yep, that's important to remind folks. Stephanie Borman, live tonight. Thank you. According to Safe Kids Worldwide, every 10 days in this country, a child dies because they're left alone in a hot car. Today, Spartanburg, it took just 25 minutes for this thermometer to rise from 77 degrees to 114 inside a car. If a child's body temperature gets to 107, that can be fatal. Safe Kids says there's more than one way to keep our kids safe. You can put reminders on your cell phone. They have apps now that you can put on your phone. Also, car seat manufacturers are creating car seats that have sensors that will alarm you when a child has been left in the car. In 2018, 52 children died from heat stroke, according to Safe Kids. Well, this is the time of the year we load up the family and hit the road. It's travel season officially underway, and experts say before you head out on any road trip this season, you or your mechanic should check out your oil and transmission fluids, and also don't forget your tires. These hot summer days impact tire safety and performance, so making sure that you check the air pressure and the tread depth is essential. Tire Corral co-owner Terry Rice says you shouldn't solely rely on the car to tell you about problems. You do get a lot of indicators, but if you're a uh, car is a little older. You may not have some of the newest systems like the uh, tire pressure monitor monitoring system that lets you know when you have a tire going down or when you have engine trouble. So, of course, you want to just check those or have them checked out. Another simple tip for car trips, avoid overloading the car. Overloading has a similar impact to driving on underinflated tires. Simpsonville hopes to extend the Swamp Rabbit Trail into their city limits. There's no direct link to the current trail, but they're already getting ready to build their own through downtown. 7 News reporter Kirsten Glavin has the details from Simpsonville. This is a one mile stretch of trail that City Council voted to start building right here at the start of Trade Street all the way down toward Fairview Road. Now, while it may be isolated to start, the big picture is to connect it to a growing network of trails already in this area. This one actually has a little bit of a shock absorber in it. For bike shops like Cycle Haas in Simpsonville, getting a new bike trail through the downtown area is a game changer. I think it's going to be really cool. It's going to be getting more people in here. The small business sits right near Trade Street in the middle of downtown, where the one mile stretch of path is set to start. Simpsonville City Council voting unanimously to invest 450000 
into laying asphalt and fixing stormwater piping to build the trail out to Fairview Road. Well, they will be exposed to all of our wonderful shopping here in the downtown area, our restaurants, some of our unique places such as some of the gift shops. While it's only a small strip, city officials say their vision goes on for miles with goals to continue building a local network of trails to eventually connect to neighboring cities in the Golden Strip area. City Administrator Diana Gracely says they're working with Greenville County to ultimately connect it to the Swamp Rabbit Trail. The idea is to have the spine of the Swamp Rabbit, if you will, extend from ICAR along the existing railway um, all the way through the Golden Strip area. So this would be part of that spine of the system. Meanwhile, one local organization called the Golden Strip Trail Group is facilitating those meetings with neighboring city leaders and with the community to to hopefully link it all. We're working all together to try to make this happen. So we're starting with a one mile piece, but you know, hopefully it'll be many, many miles of trails. And the next phase of this project is to connect this one mile stretch of trail toward Heritage Park. Reporting in Simpsonville, Kirsten Glavin, 7 News. Kirsten says that trail could be ready for use by this fall.